Hi, this is Kirsten uh, from JK Fiber Arts. I uh, recently uh, showed a video of this uh, blend that uh, I just made this custom top uh, on my hackle uh, called uh, Chinkatik. And uh, it's uh, based on a photo that I took at the beach. Um, so I'm gonna spin this up. Uh, this is a, a beautiful blend of merino, alpaca, camel and silk, and faux cashmere. And um, there's a little bit of Firestar in there too. Uh, so what I did was uh, I just uh, weighed this out and I divided this into two. And uh, what uh, my plan I think is, and we'll kind of play around with this as I go, is I'm gonna spin this one from the fold. So this one I'm gonna spin straight and then I'm gonna two ply. And I have uh, six ounces and I'm going to make some lovely next to skin soft, probably a scarf or a cowl, hat, mitten set, something like that. Um, I haven't decided yet. Uh, I am going to spin this half of it from the fold. Uh, so this is a good opportunity to show you um, in a little more depth how to spin from the fold. The uh, theory behind spinning from the fold is to um, keep your colors separate uh, so that you don't have as much blending uh, of the colors um, and uh, to also kind of uh, reduce the barber pole effect. So the way you spin from the fold is you just break um, a piece off, usually around four inches. Uh, you want it not to hang out the bottom of your hand uh, too much. This might be maybe a teensy bit long. Um, and you put it over top of your index finger uh, and then um, you uh, tease a little piece out to start right here like that. And, uh, and then you just start spinning it from the fold. So from the fold is basically you're folding the piece in half and now we're starting. I, I'm just going to spin this uh, Z-ply so my wheel is going clockwise. I've teased out my little piece. And something that will, will help you too is to, um, I tip my hand down a little bit, just a little bit here. And I'm just getting this onto my uh, wheel. There we go. All right. So what you're gonna see here is uh, solid, uh, mostly solid blocks of color. There'll be some overlapping here. Uh, and you can see the uh, colors are uh, maintaining uh, relatively solid. This is uh, now up into the blue. Um, one thing that I don't actually like is I typically don't leave my finger in there. You can just grab it like this and, and hold it and uh, for whatever reason, when I hold my finger out like that, it gets sore, so I, I do it this way. Um, I just wanna do a little quick check here and see um, what I feel like this yarn wants to be when it grows up. Uh, I like to do a little uh, test spin here just to see how what thickness um, I feel like it spins well at. Um, I, I, this is part that I do somewhat uh, instinctively uh, but uh, it is actually called spinning with the crimp. Um, so if you have a lot of crimp, you're, you're gonna probably spin it thicker. If you have very fine crimp, you're probably gonna spin it thinner. Um, this obviously is very fine. And it wants to be thin. I'm debating whether I'm gonna fight the thinness here. Um, my default though is pretty thin. This isn't bad. This is like 28, 28. You could probably two ply this uh, into a sport weight yarn. Um, so uh, we're going to do that right now and do a little ply back test. My ply back test is onto the bobbin. Pinch, pull this out, fold it in half, and then let it twist on itself. Oh, that is beautiful. Look at that. Very nice. And let's see, I'm thinking about a sport weight. Yep, it looks like it's around an 11, 12 for a two ply. Um, that looks nice. And I'm also checking the uh, twist here. And I always looking for about a 30 degree twist. Yeah, 
I think it's actually a little closer to 15, so I'm gonna put a little more twist in it. Continue with this chunk, and then all you do is you just keep breaking off chunks. You can see now I'm kind of moving in here to this red, and then there's a little bit back to the white again. But I will show you on the bobbin here in a second. If you um, spin from the fold and then chain fly, uh, you will definitely get something that will end up in a stripe. And depending on how long your your color repeat is when you spin from the fold, um, you know it, 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 you can have a really nice um, uh, repeating stripe pattern, um, which can be quite lovely. You, know, you could divide this into thirds. And then you could just spin each third from the fold and three ply it. You could just spin the entire thing from the fold and then chain ply it, and that would give you that stripe look. Uh, so it, there's just a very uh, basically limitless way to uh, decide how you want to ply and how to spin this, and you can get very different uh, results. Well, I wanted to show you my bobbin, except that I forgot to advance the hook. So this is very loose. This is one of the things that I don't like when that happens to me. Um, but it doesn't affect the spin at all. It, it's just unattractive. Um, and that's why I wish that they would make the auto level winder for my uh, minstrel because I would get it in a second. So the next uh, part, so I, I finished down to the end of that and I just left um, uh, this little tuft here on the end. That's where I'm gonna join. So um, all I do is I'm just gonna break off another section here. And again, fold it in half. And this is gonna come out over the tip of my finger to start, just tease a little piece off like that. Start trailing, and you just pull. A little tension back into that drafting triangle there. And that'll be the blending. You can see that's kind of blending right there. And we're joined. When I first started spinning from the fold, I did not like it. And I, I really didn't think it was anything I would ever use. And I, I have grown to love it so much, and it really changes the uh, end result of my yarn. It, it, uh, I just love it. I probably spin more from the fold now than any other uh, form of uh, spinning. This is my bobbin. Uh, it is messier than I would like because I had that little loose slide there, but um, the, the spinning is consistent. Uh, and you can see that the um, colors are in blocks. You know, there's brown, blue, uh, and then I had a little more brown, blue. Here's green, a lot big section of green, and then here's the black. So, uh, you know, that's all uh, just going to be a kind of a stripe pattern. And then um, what I'll do is here's the roving down here. I will um, spin the other half of this straight so it'll have more of that barber pole blending effect. And when I do that with the solid sections, try to get this to focus. Uh, when I do that with these solid sections, um, it's gonna make a lovely yarn. So I will let you uh, work on your spinning from the fold. Here is the uh, Chincoteague custom blend that I uh, spun. Original plan was to spin one bobbin from the fold. The other one I was gonna spin straight, but I decided to spin them both from the fold. And uh, now I'm just gonna do a little uh, test spin here and a test ply and see what I like best. Just gonna load this up onto my lazy cake and away we go. Do a little chain ply here and see if I like it. I know I said I wanted a two ply and I do want a two ply. It's just, I uh, tend to be a little thin in my spinning see what this looks like and then I will do a, a two ply and we'll see the difference here um, so oh yeah that looks pretty oh, that's really pretty do I even want to do anything else oh, I don't want to stop this looks really good oh, for education purposes I'll do it <laughs> but I'm not gonna like it oh, it just killed me a little bit inside to do that okay it's fine all right I'm going to wind this off, I'll put it on the Nitty Naughty, and um, we'll see what it looks like skeined up.
um, onto the Nitty Naughty and Made Little Mini skein. I'll show you that in a minute. And uh, now we are going to do the two ply. I did like the chain ply, um, it was very lovely. And we'll see how this one looks. This is gonna give us a really thin yarn. I'm gonna stop and line this on to uh, the Nitty Naughty. See if I like it. Here are my mini skeins. The one on the left is the chain ply and the one on the right is the two ply. I think I like the chain ply best. It is um, more the yarn I'm looking for. I have uh, decided to chain ply uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it's for yarn purpose. Um, I have a lot of that beautiful uh, um, camel and silk in there and uh, the um, faux cashmere and there's this really pretty halo. When I was uh, zooming in close to take a, a photograph, I uh, saw that there's going to be, the, it's really soft and there's going to be this really pretty halo and I, I think that um, that would just uh, not work well for socks. For, for this, I'm imagining uh, something uh, like a hat or um, a hat mitten or a cowl, something like that. So uh, I am going to go with the sport weight. And I did a waffle back and forth there. So once again, back to spinning um, uh, chain ply. So one loop, two loops. This loop goes through this and we're ready to roll. And I'm just gonna pull that loop through. My front hand is holding tension all the time. Uh, and then I'm sliding down and it's pinching while I make my loop. It's going onto the bobbin and pinching while I, my right hand makes the next loop. I hope you can see that. I hope I have this set high enough. Uh, and uh, it's about your feet and hands working well together and big loops. The bigger the loop, the longer uh, distance you have between um, the little joins that you'll see. And if you don't have enough twist in this, those little joins will have like little holes in them. Uh, and you can absolutely tell when you look at the yarn that it was chain plied. I try to have that not be the case. So um, when I make my big loop, right here's my joint. I just kind of roll over it a little bit just to make sure that the twist really gets there um, and uh, seals up that little hole. All right, let's see what we have here. Look, right at 30. It's a nice ply back on itself. Yeah, I like it. Well, that is pretty much all I have to say about chain ply, other than it takes a lot of practice. Big loops are the key uh, and either speeding up your hands or slowing down your feet, whatever works for you. I think the vast majority of people, it's going to be slowing down your feet, um, to, uh, make sure that you don't over twist. And, um, and my little trick is that join when you slide your hand. So your, your front hand comes across that joint and I just roll over it a couple times, uh, and let that twist. I guess I put a little extra pressure there just to let that twist come over make sure that I don't have a little uh, hole or a loop there so it's less visible when people are looking at it to see if it's been chain plied. All right, I'm gonna finish this bobbin, all this yarn, and then I will uh, show you what it looks like. This is my finished chain ply. Well, let's see, I don't have my ring light, so I got the window light. It looks so good. I am glad that I decided to stick with the chain ply. And uh, I'm going to put this on the Nitty Naughty and we'll finish this up and uh, we'll get to see how the uh, final yarn looks. But I am really happy with this. And it's a, a very nice, consistent sport weight. This is the final yarn. It is a WPI 12, a nice sport weight, beautifully, consistently plied and uh, ready to make something wonderful. Let's see. Uh, I will uh, see you next time. I don't know what we're going to do yet. We'll see. Uh, I think uh, maybe we'll do some bat spinning from uh, Art Bats. All right. Cannot wait to show you what I knit with this. Until next time, spin happy.